Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are trying to get your foot in the door in the software industry, make sure you give them a look. Uh, they're working with all the latest web development technologies to get your foot in the door right away. Uh, employers are actually hiring their alumni and, uh, and they're growing each day. So make sure you guys give them, uh, just check them out. The link is in the description tab below. All right, so I want to take a moment to go over what GraphQL is. And really what this is, is it's a, uh, a schema language for your API. And it's a, it's a service type of uh, almost like middleware that sits between your, your actual application that you're building and then the communication to the back end data from where this comes from. So the problem with mo like any sort of complex websites, even static websites for that matter, is that your data is coming from all over the place. It's coming from multiple different databases. Sometimes it's coming from multiple different databases, depending on even just an environment that the, the application's running in, uh, depending on how sophisticated things go. So it can be very, very complicated to be like, I, you know, for this request, I need to go to a uh, MongoDB, and the other one, I need to go to Postgres or MySQL or something like that. Well, GraphQL actually simplifies a lot of that for you because you're just communicating from your application to the GraphQL uh, client and then all the complexities of where those con connections are being made um, or actually set up in GraphQL so it, it's, it gets out of your way so that you can start developing right away. So I want to give you guys a demonstration on how to get started with GraphQL and it can be rather daunting. It's, it's somewhat difficult but what I recommend is that you go to this website here on GitHub. There's all these different APIs that you can play around with and the one that I want to play around with is going to be, um, since we have a music site, let's go ahead and use the uh, the music brains one. This is fine. Now it gives you like a, a an example. This is a rather complex one. So let's go ahead and just uh, get rid of that real quick. Um, so the first thing you want to do, as you can see, that you must provide a query. So you want to go ahead and create your query. So we're going to create our query, and we can just call this whatever we want. But I'll call this test. And then as soon as you do that, like if you highlight, and I know this isn't very big, so I'll make this bigger. If you highlight over it, it immediately tells you that, okay, um, there's some sort of name or something that it, it belongs underneath test. So you need to start somewhere. So press control. So press control space and you can see that there's all these different options. Um, so this just kind of goes through and I mean, you can query Spotify, last FM, whatever. Uh, in my case, I'm going to do a search. And then you can see if you highlight over search, you can see that the search query must have a selection of subfields. So anytime it says that, you want to go ahead and do a subfield, which means that you need to do another bracket. And then you highlight over the bracket, and you can see that this is expecting something as well. So you're going to do control dot, or I'm sorry, control space. And then this is going to tell you, um, okay, what are you trying to do? So I'm going to be looking up an artist. Now here, artist, if you look up over this, it says, um, artists of type connection must have a selection subfield. So we've seen that before, but it also says field artists argument query of type string is required, but not provided. So anytime you're adding an argument to something, in this case, we are adding an argument to artists because it takes an, art, uh, an argument. How do we know that? If we go over to our documentation and we start going down this query, we can see that uh, this is the root. Um, and then we have the search. So we're going to look down here for the search. And then we have artists. So we're going to look down here for artists. And we're going to click on that. And you're going to see that artists takes in um, three arguments. Now, this one, though, you can see is required. That's why that, uh, that, that exclamation point is there. So you have to at least provide a query. So we're going to do that. And we're going to go with the, my favorite band name, Bayside, which is uh, a rather standard thing that I do. Um, so now you can see that we satisfied that first argument, but now we have another child that we need to satisfy. So it's like um, you need to do something here. So control space again. And it's like, OK, you have an option of returning uh, nodes, which is probably what we want, which means a bunch of data elements. You could get just, just get page info or the total count. But what we want to do, these would be important for pagination. But I want to go ahead and grab nodes that match the Bayside query. And nodes itself, you can see if we highlight over it, it says, okay, it needs subfields. So we know what to do there. Just add another set of curly braces. And then down here, you can see nodes. It's like, um, we still don't know what it is that you want to return. When you finally get to where you want to go, um, and you can see here that when we finally get to where we want to go, we need to go ahead and specify just control space. And this is where you're going to end up getting to the, finally the data elements that you're looking for. So it's like, Okay, so with this query of Bayside, I want to return all the IDs. I want to return the name. And then um, oh, is there like a, we'll do a country. Um, yes, yeah, even do recordings. Let's do that. 
Um, so now you can see with record, actually let's not do recordings for right now, let's just keep it right there. Um, let's go ahead and press play now, we can press play, and now we're getting results back that match. And in this case, this is the one that I wanted, this is the base side, um, base side this is all garbage right here. Uh, and then Anthony Ranieri is the lead singer of the band uh, base side up here. So this is actually returning some uh, real good data that we need. Um, and you can see like if I don't specify country, GraphQL is only going to return what it is that you want. So it's very efficient. Um, it just returns what you need and not other stuff that you don't need. Um, and then from there, let's go ahead and um, add that um, the, the recordings one. Um, let's just actually do really, eh, I'll do the recordings. Let's do recordings. Um, so you can see recordings obviously needs uh, some sort of sub argument. So in recordings here, now we're going to do a control space. And uh, we're going to say, you know, I want the nodes from the recording. You can see nodes is like, okay, um, must have subfields. So once again, we do the curly braces. Uh, anytime you run into that message. Uh, and then here you can see if we do control space, now we can start getting the ID of actual recordings. And I'm going to get the titles. And I'm going to get... I'll get the root. Uh, you know, I don't want anything that has more sub, but you guys get the point, I'm sure, uh, from this example, how GraphQL works. Very similar to JSON. It's not that complicated. I'm not sure why people say it's so complicated, but uh, it is something that you do have to wrap your mind around. But as you can see, um, there, the, like this is a Bayside song that I'm looking for. Same with that. So a lot of these are actually Bayside songs. Yeah, this is a good song right here. I like that. Um, so anyway, um, uh, yeah, this is a, lo a lot of this stuff. Will, um, yeah, this is awesome. So if you want to practice querying real data, I, I recommend you probably do that with GraphQL uh, before you start getting too, too f much further into it, um, you know, to try to build a, a website around it. So if you guys are like interested in learning more about GraphQL and actually how to make it work, I have a tutorial series that's coming out on Udemy in just a little bit. Uh, it's going to be using GraphQL, React, and uh, Node.js, and it's a single-page app. Uh, actually, Static Site Generator, it's going to be using some Python scripts and other things as well. So it, it's a complete full, full series, um, but it definitely uses a lot of GraphQL. So if you guys are interested in learning more about that, make sure you check that out. It will be releasing soon. Also, I have a course available on getting started with React and TypeScript on Udemy, so make sure you guys check that out if you are uh, just getting your foot in the door with uh, TypeScript and React.